Hello you guys, this is Gladys from Gladys Garden. How's everyone tonight? Um, was my night anyways. Um, I want to say hi to you guys and as promised, a little late but as promised, I wanted to um, go ahead and do the tutorial for um, the impressions on the um, embossing that I did for the Manila Folder uh, Journal book and the technique that we talked about. I don't have the book with me anymore, the one that was finished, um, because it was um, given away. It's actually been, it was mailed already. But you remember it was the lettering that we embossed and we embossed on the inner part. I had done this um, camera uh, die cut and I had embossed it and then did the imprint. And I've had requests as to how to do those and I promised you I was going to do it last night and um, I wasn't filling out two part last night it was um my heart has been giving me a little bit of a trouble but I had to talk to my heart and I says no you have to behave so well, enough of the joke so I will go ahead and start again I'm already these are the things that we are going to utilize our camera dies and then the word that says treasure all of them and then we use this little corners also if you, there you go. Um, they're like, you know, picture corners. And what I used was the uh, Martha Stewart um, punch. Um, there's about five per page according to the album if you go back and look at the, at the video. So I cut five uh, per album or book. And then what I do before I emboss them, I actually glue them inside so you can have the perfect corner and you're not going to be messing with that anymore. And so you don't want to have a lot of embossing stuff in the back. If you do, it's going to make it a little bit more difficult. The other part that I wanted to bring out is that um, <clears throat> for this particular technique, you must use either, um, I believe these are called um, the Stipendious um, uh, new, um, I don't know if they're new, maybe a, maybe a year old, um, embossing powders. I absolutely love them. Let's see which one is better for you to read this way. Yeah, um, I really, really do like them. I own a lot of them, but I feel like a child in a candy store. Every time I go around them, I don't have all the colors, and they literally have lots and lots of colors and different variations. Um, most of them are aged, or they give them that age look to the embossing, and I guess that's why I love them so much. In this case, we use aged silver. And I used, for the white one, I used aged ivory. And I think for the green one, it was aged um, green. I'm not sure if the camera is going to pick up the green a lot. Let me see if I move it around a little bit. Um, but they're, they're really, really nice. Um, they're kind of kind of variegated a little bit, you know, with different colors. And um, I just like it. And by nature, this um, embossing powder, it's thick. Thick than your normal, really thin, you know, like powdery, uh, dusty type of um, embossing. It's not like that. So it's thick. So that's the other reason why I prefer using them, other than they're, you know, obviously really, really beautiful. And, but let's just pretend you don't have those. Then what you can do is just go back. <clears throat> this is the H silver, and as thick as it is, I still went back a couple of times. You want to make sure this puppy, this puppy is really plumped and really thick so by the time we start working with it it'll just give you a good imprint of whatever is it that you're using so that's what we're going to do today so i show you the you know the the powders and everything that i use now let's talk about what you're going to emboss them with i use um i i rather have um rubber stamps you know something either the clean kind uh but i rather have them the the wood mountain just because it just makes it easier for me to hold on and to press. You don't have to do a lot of pressing, but you know, some. Um, the other thing that works really well with this ones, um, because we're actually doing scripts, so I'm not doing so much of flowery and stuff. I know on the book I've done, um, on one of my latest books that I finished that I haven't had a video done, I made the imprints of three legends in the music business. Um, Beethoven was one of them, and I really like um, liked it um, how it came out. But for this tutorial, precisely, we're just going to use lettering. So, which ones I prefer? Something that is filled like this, you know, and it's like this. Oh, there is. I'm trying to look myself into um, focus here. Okay, so lettering like this, French lettering is 
perfect. Any writing will do. Even this will work too. It has a lettering, although you have bigger patterns in there, so that may just kind of goes. Um, it may not work for smaller things like the letters perhaps, but it could work really well for this. So I brought that out. But anything that has letters, I have another big one right here. So anything with scripts, um, I prefer to use. Even this is very nice. It has a little seal here. Very minute things, but the script is bold on this one. This other one is very nice. I love it. with One of my favorite stamps. Um, you can tell it's been used. And I do belong to the Tim Holtz religion. I never clean my stamps. Ever, ever, ever. I have better things to do in my life than clean stamps. So, um, so these two are really, really nice. But I kind of stick with this one because I think it's the right size for the imprints than this one. But you can still get away with this. I found another one around my stash that it is, um, it's really like almost like a lace type of pattern. This can work really well too. But you know, again, you have to use um, your your acrylic uh, pad in order to use them. I rather have the mount for you know the wooden mount for this one. So let's uh, start talking, and I'll show you how I did this ones. Um, I ever explained to you how I um, glue them. Now I'm going to show you how to how do I make sure that these puppies are um, filled with embossing powder. And what I do, I always hold it with this little tool right here. It's like a I don't know like a pier paper piercer. Just hold it down, and I start going. Now I know that that doesn't have enough, so I'm going to pick it up while it's still hot, and I'm going to go back again. Now if you're very sensitive with your skin, you may not want to do that. I kind of live dangerously, and um, I'm kind of used to it. So uh, here's the noise again. I hope you can see what I'm doing. And see I don't know if you can appreciate that but let me see if I can zoom in on the camera there see how it got it's kind of fatty you know it has a nice little roundy effect in it that's when you know it's full and that's going to give a really nice imprint of whatever it is that you're trying to do all right so that's basically the, pr the procedure I did with everything else and for the sake of times I um, you know I finished everything else ahead of time so I can just go ahead and show you the imprints and you know, I really hate the embossing powder. That's one of those things that I love embossing. It's one of my favorite things to, not to do, but the effect that it does in a project. But, you know, it's really messy. Okay, I'm going to stop complaining now and keep on. All right, so this is what you do. Once you have it all nice and embossed and thick, then you want to go back and um, basically... Um, melting it and putting your stamp there. And it only takes a few seconds for this to be set, okay? So just follow right here. And you're going to start to see how the, the, the embossing powder kind of starts moving around a little bit. That's the time when you want to go ahead and put your stamp. We just hold it there for a few seconds. It's not, it doesn't have to be forever. Um, and it's done pretty quickly. But it must be hot enough because if it's not hot enough, you know that the imprint was not good. And there's, a, okay, so there it is. And I'm just going to peel it off. Now you see that? It's not gorgeous. Let's see, there it is. So you can see it a little better right there. I love it. I love, and I only did this little corner, okay, so I wasn't trying to go uh, just for time sakes I was showing you. So let's just pretend that turned out horrible and you do not like it. Look. So let's just say that, you know, it was crooked and it wasn't where I wanted, or I needed it or... I just don't like the way it looks. You can always go back, remelt it, and try it all over again. It's really fun to do this. So there it is. Wow, see, I really like that. Let's see if I can try to put it right close to the camera. It's maybe not too close. Oh, I don't know this camera angle. There. But I'm not even sure if it's picking it up. There. Things a little better. Okay, so I'm going to keep on with it. 